Welcome to this 100th uploaded video on this channel. Uh, this episode will be an ask me anything and I have received a couple of questions that I will answer. Okay, so this video will be a little bit different. Let me first start by uh, talking a little bit about myself. I'm 56 years old and I live outside Gothenburg, uh, a city on the west southwest coast of Sweden. And uh, I live in a single family house and uh, together with my family and I have three boys, uh, 11, 13 and 18 years old. And we also have a dog an English Bull Terrier that is, uh, I think she is eight years now. And uh, my hobbies besides uh, scale modeling is um, house renovation, uh, audio projects of different types. And uh, I also like to tinker with uh, electronics and uh, computers in general, basically. And uh, as a kid, I uh, did build a lot of uh, um, plastic models. I think uh, most uh, boys in my generation did that. And um, uh, I have not saved any of them. Um, they have all been uh, scrapped. But uh, maybe that is a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> Back then I, I barely painted the models. I just uh, glued it together and uh, placed uh, the decals and uh, yeah, and put it on, on the shelf for a while. And um, I, I got back, back to the hobby when I turned 50. I actually received, um, uh, I think it was one 72 scale Revell J29 to none um, as a Father's Day present or something like that. And I went out on... Um, on the internet and uh, started to look online for uh, tips what to yeah how to basically build a mo model and uh, I was totally blown away by all the photos of finished models and uh, all the build videos and everything it was just amazing so uh, uh, the next day I went out and bought some paint and tools and I started to assemble the kit and I think I finished it in uh, in a couple of days or a week or something like that and it uh, looked like crap really <laughs> I, I don't know if I have a photo of it it's, in that case I will try to include it in the video and then you you will uh, see what I mean but uh, I got really hooked and uh, I decided to this was something that I wanted to do so uh, I, w I bought more tools and more paint and I also bought a couple of kits and uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it started for me again. Okay, so that kind of leads us into the first question uh, that is from Forever Plastic Kits and he asks, what is your actual job and level of studies? Okay, so if we start with the studies I basically hold a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and what I mean by basically is that uh, I left school with an associate's degree uh, but my first job was at a small startup company that was located on the uh, campus area of um, uh, Chalmers uh, University of Technology here in Gothenburg. So I got a really unique opportunity to both work and study at the same time. Uh, during daytime and, and evenings and I had a re really great flexibility um, at that workplace. But I left that job after a couple of years and over the years I have worked with um, production of industrial computers, um, software design for uh, an electronics design for radar equipment, uh, software for high-end cameras and uh, telecom equipment. 
And I have also worked as a product owner for a small company that was uh, uh, developing um, assistive listening devices for hard of hearing. And uh, now I work for the automotive industry um, here in Gothenburg uh, with uh, infotainment systems and uh, more specifically with, uh, with the audio part of that. Okay, that leads us into the next question. Um, Johan asks, how important is accuracy of the kit to you? Would inaccuracy be a deal breaker? And he also asks, do you do any research before buying the kit? Okay, good questions. No, inaccuracy is not a deal breaker, unless the kit looks absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes uh, minor inaccuracy can be fixed with aftermarket or scratch building or even 3D printing. And uh, all kits are inaccurate at some point. And I'm not super picky about uh, a missing panel line or if the drop tank is slightly out of scale or something like that. I look at kit reviews online. And I also look at build threads on forums to see what the kit looks like and uh, how it builds up. And I talk to fellow modelers and ask them what kit they recommend for a given subject. So uh, I guess that answers your second question about uh, research. I uh, do a little bit of research for when I when I buy a kit. But of course, like most people, I, I also buy kits uh, on a whim. If I if something looks cool or if it's a hot kit that I think, wow, this is uh, this looks great. I really want to build that, and uh, and then I put it in the stash. <clears throat> the next question is from Sirita. If you were to sell it, how much would you sell it for? And uh, that kind of brings us into the topic of uh, commission builds. And uh, of course, it can be very flattering to uh, if someone asks you to build build a model, but uh, the short answer is no. For me, this is a pure hobby and I intend to keep it that way. And uh, the hobby is all about choosing a subject, uh, doing research and reading books, watching movies or documentaries, and use that as an inspiration to uh, build a model. I can't really see myself doing all that uh, kind of prep work for uh, a subject that uh, someone else chooses. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I guess that it, it's uh, I do only do this for just because it's fun and uh, and um, being forced to choose a subject subject and uh, being forced to do uh, it in certain ways would kind of take the fun out of it, I think. And uh, But of course, uh, what about selling a model that uh, that is already built? And uh, maybe that is something that I will do in the future. Um, I, I normally want to, after I have finished the build, I normally want to keep that uh, model for a while, uh, to put it in a display cabinet and uh, maybe take it to, sh- to model shows and um, uh, eventually, when I uh, <laughs> run out of space in my display cabinet, or or I think that this model is not uh, uh, so fantastic, I can probably make uh, a new one that is better. Then I, I might uh, get rid of of, uh, of that old model. And if I sell it or give it away to someone that wants it, that is, yeah, I don't know. M- maybe I will eBay it or or something, or, or maybe I will just give it to someone. Okay, so next question is from Georgios. He asks, riveting and scribing. It's possible to see this, a good tutorial. Uh, well, <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm not really uh, the right person here because I really suck at scribing and riveting. Um, this is one of the things that I struggle most with uh, in, in, uh, in, the build, in the building phase of a model and uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better at it uh, just by 
taking it easy and uh, don't stress myself too much while I'm doing it. But on the other hand, if I am going to do a tutorial on this, I better get good at it. So uh, maybe that is a good reason to do, do a video. So we we'll see about that. I, I see what I can do. Meanwhile, if you want to see a master at work, go check out Paul Bud6 uh, channel on, on YouTube, uh, Scale Model Workshop. Uh, he has two episodes about uh, scribing and uh, panel lines, and uh, they are great, so I can really recommend watching those. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, little bit different episode. Uh, if you have more questions, um, I will probably do another AMA some, some time in the future. So uh, keep on posting questions and when they start to pile up then I will do uh, another Ask Me Anything episode. So um, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.